Hello and welcome back to Shakespeare. We are working on the second Maiden's Tragedy and today we're going to finish up Act 3 because it only has one scene in it. So Act 3, Scene 1. It's been quite a scene. Um, Gavinus and Lady were hanging out and Siphonerus came to see them and Siphonerus offered Lady a jewel from the king but then Gavinus killed Siphonerus and, but as Siphonerus was dying, he let them know that the house was surrounded by ruffians who were going to abduct Lady and take her back to the Tyrant King, sort of regardless of whether or not she wants to go. And she so desperately didn't want to go that she was begging with Gavinus to please kill her. And he tried, but he passed out in in his attempt and she thought that he died so she killed herself he wakes up sees that she's dead he's very distraught he puts Siphonerus body by the door so that when the ruffians break in because they've been knocking on the door the whole time when they come in they stab Siphonerus so sort of the blame for killing Siphonerus falls on these ruffians now instead of on Gavinus and they come in and they see that she is also dead and they're like well the king isn't gonna like that very much but i guess this is what it is so they take Siphonerus body and leave and Gavinus finishes off the scene saying what a comfort it is to see him gone without her faith she told me her everlasting sleep would bring me joy yet i was still unwilling to believe her her life was so sweet to me like some man in time of sickness that would rather wish to please his fearful flesh, his former health restored to him than death, when, after trial, if it were possible, ten thousand worlds could not entice him to return again and walk upon the earth from whence he flew. So stood my wish, joyed in her life and breath, now gone, there is no heaven but after death. Come, thou delicious treasure of mankind, to him that knows what virtuous woman is and can discreetly love her. The whole world yields not a jewel like her. Ransack rocks and caves beneath the deep. O oh, thou fair spring of honest and religious desires, fountain of weeping honor, I will kiss thee after death's marble lip. Thou art cold enough to lie entombed now by my father's side. Without offense and kindred, there I'll place thee with one I loved the dearest next thee. Help me to mourn all that love chastity. So he's saying his goodbye. He's saying his goodbye to her and he's mourning her death. Um, he's saying that she let him know that her passing was the best option here and it would make him happy. But he's like, no, I'm, I'm never going to be happy again until after I die myself. So in his farewell to her, he goes to kiss her one more time, and, but her body is now cold. So he's like, okay, let's entomb her. And he plans to entomb her in the same like crypt where his father is buried. So presumably after the end of this scene, this act three, scene one, because that the monologue ends the scene, um, he takes her body and puts it into a tomb. So that's where we're gonna kick off act four. And yeah, brace yourselves, there's still a lot to go. I'll see you tomorrow. Mwah.